Barrel making is an art form in its, in its own right. Um, and what you need to know about these barrels and the, the different coloration, they come primarily from the northeastern French forests. You do get American oak as well, oak grown in America. It creates a completely different, or it imparts a completely different flavor to the wine than French oak does. American oak has got slight more, slightly more vanillin, so it's got a slightly sweeter flavor to it, whereas the French oak doesn't. The staves come in, they get chopped in a certain way, they have to get refined and fined. They get beveled in certain ways so that they get fitted. I mean, they are individual staves and the barrel maker will actually go and choose from the racks where they are drying out. They lie there for about three years so that they get rid of any kind of fungus that might have grown on the trees. So that lies there, they, they're properly created, they're dry, and then the cooper actually goes and chooses his staves and puts them together. If one doesn't look like it's fitting, he chooses another one. They start off by, by having the ring and then they drop each of the staves in. So you actually have a whole collection of staves with a single ring and they put it over a fire. And the toastiness of that barrel is what will, be, is what will determine the flavour of the wine. So some people like a heavy toast if they're dealing with a much bigger, bolder kind of red wine. If they're looking for a light and elegant wine, they would toast it slightly less. So it then gets toasted and as the wood is warmer, they can pull it closer and closer so it doesn't snap. And then it creates this beautiful curve and then they add their rings. You can always taste new oak on a wine where it's very fresh and it's very oaky. So younger wine that has been put into brand new barrels will be much oakier and older wines that have actually had the, the benefit of being soaked in wine pretty much for three, four years, they will then start getting this different coloration. This hole in the middle here is obviously the wine gets filled through, through that hole and then it's a rubber bung that holds it so that it's airtight and then whenever the winemaker is testing he uses like a science pipette and he takes out the bung, he puts the pipette in, he draws out the wine, he can test to see what's going on. They run their tests in the lab, etc. So that's what that's for. So the barrel will always have a little hole in it. This particular movie that you're going to see, I mean it's two minutes, um, is a guy called Neville. His father, Wim Arby, so anywhere we've ever known Wim Arby, um, he was the, the, the sort of main and head cooper at the distillery for 20 years. His son Neville has now taken over and they all have their own barrels, their own tools. They actually, as part of their apprenticeship, they have to make their own tools, those, those wooden tools and the steel. They have to forge them themselves. It's really an extraordinary artisanal craft to, to be able to be that. And then what also happens is once you've made your barrel, you actually ha you sign off with your own signature tune. And every cooper has his own signature tune. And you can, you can see that, I mean, it's a wonderful rum moment that we, we see them as it finishes.